<laughs> yeah, you're open to what they want to do. Um, and so I'll give you an example. When I was um, writing Moo, which some of you may have read, which takes place at a strangely familiar Midwestern uh, <laughs> Agricultural and Technical University. <laughs> um, this character that I knew I was going to be in there, Chairman X, is a Marxist horticulture professor. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's out doing some, looking at the espalier fruit trees that he has around the old slaughterhouse that's in the middle of the campus. And, um, he sees somebody go in the door. Now, as far as he knows, this is an abandoned facility because they're not, they're not dissecting animals in this facility anymore. Now, I didn't know that kid was going to go in the door, but as soon as he went in the door, I said, uh-oh, something's got to happen, you know. And so that kid had to become a character, and he had to have a function. And so... It's really important, even if you're not a very, um, if you're not a person who doesn't like, if you're, I'm a person who likes the unexpected. Um, and I like to make, make it up as I go along. And I, that's gotten more true as I've, got, as I've gotten older. But even if you're not that person, if you want your characters to live, you have to allow them to tell you to make things up as they go along. Um, I expected some of the horses in Horse Heaven to die. They did not want to die. <laughs> you know, finally, we sent a quarter horse to the slaughterhouse just because I wanted to say something about horse slaughter, but I couldn't send one of the others to the slaughterhouse. So, um, so that's the sense of energy in your story. That's where it comes from. They do stuff. 